Lord Jesus called her. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Cal. And Good morning. I'm very happy to have you with me here today once again. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? I'm very well, very well. Bright and early tomorrow. Uh, today, sorry. Well, not so bright, clearly. <laughs> right. So last week we spoke um, we spoke about your software, your AI, and yes. last week we focused it more on agents. Yeah. And I know you had also prepared another side of things, which is more geared towards schools. And we decided last time to give a bit of a recap to those who are watching us this morning. We decided that we'll kind of split the two up and today we'll dedicate it entirely to schools. We have a short video coming up soon, but before I move on to that, can you introduce us to this concept? Yes. So um, a major pain, pain point that we found with uh, colleges and universities or higher education institutions was um, many of their leads or inquiries come via their website. And what happens is, um, and, and in some cases, this can be a really, really uh, generate a really high volume of email inquiries. And so they, they, there needs to be a team in place to respond to this uh, huge volume of emails. And the questions are often the same. And also many of those inquiries or leads do not really lead to a, um, uh, you know, an enrollment or someone actually thinking I'm going to enroll at your school. So it's a lot of wasted time. And I was at a, uh, an event recently and I, I spoke to about 10 universities and college representatives and I couldn't believe how frustrated they were with this, the amount of time they're spending on doing this. And so there is a way to, um, use AI to actually handle this in a very effective way. And effectively what you do is you take all the information that's on a, on a school's website, you harvest that information and you convert it into an AI compatible format and transfer it into an AI data set. And so any visitor to the website can now ask any question they want and instantly get the answer uh, to, to, to their queries. So people don't have to do it. And, and the people who would normally do that now can make far more productive use of their time. So that's the, the general principle of it. Mm -hmm. Better user experience for the visitor to the website and um, increased productivity and, and much be better use of the, that team's time. Exactly, exactly. Which is essentially the same discussion we had last week, but this time it's, it's schools, not agents. That's correct, yeah. So it's it's exactly the same thing, because at the end of the day, the schools are essentially doing the same thing from time to time. They're dealing with direct requests, and yes, they spend as much time on that as, as the agent would when trying to obviously give the right counsel to the students. Yes, and, and uh, one thing to be aware of is there is a, a study done in the U.S. among colleges, and... Um, 40% of colleges just do not respond at all mm -hmm. to website inquiries. They don't have the, the resources to do that. And I think for the, the remaining percentage, it took from typically from three to three days to 14 days to get wow. a response. So it's very frustrating for students as well. Uh, and, of course. and so this, this is a, this is an example of how AI can be used very effectively because the responses students get when they ask the questions are very conversational. And also the AI, um, it knows everything that's on your website. Whereas if, if it's an individual, they may have to you know, go and check on things and there's time involved in that in, in order to give the response that a student needs. Not to mention mistakes. 
Because yeah, over, exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, we're human. We make mistakes. Um, it's sometimes easy when you are so overwhelmed by so many things that one has to do in their day that it becomes quite easy to get the wrong information or if it's perhaps, I guess, a new member of staff who's still learning the ropes, it becomes very, very difficult um, and, and much more challenging for that person to give the right information in, you know, within a good time frame. Yes. And, and the other thing is there's typically about 20 to 30 questions students ask over and over again. So you're answering the same questions all the time. Mm -hmm. And again, it, it's a waste of time. You don't need to do that. You can let AI take care of that for you. Exactly, exactly. Well, without further ado, Cal, I am going to now play the video so that our viewers can perhaps understand or they can see what we've been talking about in practice because they are going to actually, you're going to be walking them through the process of um, how a school can benefit. And I guess from the, from the welcome screen over here, I guess we're going to see a, a case study, right? Yes, it's, it's, a, it's an early version of, of, of the software that we created for a school in, in the US. By the way, this can be used by agencies as well. Mm -hmm. but, um, I, I think I, I think it's a really big problem for schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me just play this. And then perhaps since you said it's an older version of the software, then perhaps after the video, you can walk me through how the software um, has been updated since then. Okay. Okay, okay. So here we go. Uh, welcome to this demo of Global Studies lead qualification product. Uh, this would normally sit on a website and I'm giving you an example of something that we built for a university in the US. This was just uh, an introductory version, a uh, model of it. Imagine for a second that this was your website and a student came onto your website and the, the purpose of this lead qualification product is to do just that, qualify the leads who come to your website and you'll see students can engage and in the process you can find out if they are a lead that you might want to follow up with a human being. So the student comes on here and they put in their name. So I'm just going to put in my name, put in my email address, and then I click start chat. What happens from here is the, the AI will engage with the student using questions that it's been instructed to ask, but it also has access to all the information on the university's website. So the the data on the university's website has been harvested and put into a, an AI compatible memory bank and the AI can interact with that memory bank depending on what question is asked. So you can see the first question I'm asked is, am I interested in studying here? Now the university wanted this to be one of the questions because they have found for some reason, many visitors to the website don't actually want to study there. But so for, the, for this example, let's just put yes. The next question that comes up is again, something that it's been prompted to ask the lead qualifier. So let's say I'm interested in computer science. You can see from this response, they're saying that's a good choice. Uh, the qualifier wants to find out if I'm an American or an international student. Again, that's a qualification point. Let's say uh, I'm gonna say I'm international and you can see that the, the lead qualifier can easily respond to abbreviations. Now, this question here, do I have sufficient funding? One of the things you do is in addition to taking information from the school's website, the university's website, we also give the AI instructions. So for example, here's one, uh, this shows you the kinds of things that I would do. You know, we've instructed the AI before I answer any questions, it's best if I make something clear. And here's where it's telling the student you typically need $47,000 per year. So I can put in here whatever instructions that I want and, um, and, and the responses will be given to the student accordingly. For the purpose of this, I'll say, yes, I do. I do have the adequate funding. The key qualification points were, do you have sufficient funding? Do you have the required level of English language proficiency? And also, do you have the grades to come? Those are the, the three main criteria that the school wanted to vet for. Well, let's throw in something different here. Let's say I just put, well, what's an IELTS score?
Where will the AI get the answer to this question? It'll be on the university's website. So there, it's telling me what an IELTS score is, and it's telling me I need a score of 6.5. For the sake of this, I'm going to say, um, I'm, I'm, I'll just put I'm fluent in English. I went to an English language high school. So again, that's another qualification point. Another thing I should say is that the, the elite qualifier has been instructed to send transcripts of these discussions to uh, my Google Drive so I can actually look at the what students were asking and see what the flow of questions and answers was like. And the other thing is I can also instruct the AI lead qualifier to send contact details for qualified leads to a designated email address or wherever I want it sent. So now it's saying, you see, it's telling me it's great. You're fluent in English and I attended an English language high school, so I might not need to take in the IELTS. And then it's asking me about my grade point. So let's try another one. What's the grade point average? So I'm trying to show you that the, the AI actually is much more than a sort of a standard chat robot you might see. It's very conversational in, in the answers and, and I can throw things that are kind of, you know, outside of the the very straightforward Q&A. So it's telling me what a, G, a GPA is and asking me if I meet this requirement. Let's throw in something out of the blue. Tell me some details about the computer science program. So I'm throwing something out of left field here. Again, if this was a standard sort of chat bot, this is something that could throw it. But here, the lead qualifier is, again, it's going to the, the data from the website that has been sent to the AI-compatible memory bank, and it tells me about the computer science program. And I could carry on asking any questions, you know, that I want, and I will be getting quick conversational responses. The, the AI lead qualifier can have as many conversations at the same time as possible. It's seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So you don't need a human being to do this, and if you do have have human beings follow up leads you get from your website. Imagine the only leads that your human staff will be following up on are leads that have been qualified. And so this can really reduce the amount of time you have to have human beings engaged in this. Exactly, which is what we have been talking about all along. <laughs> yes, I mean, um, there, there... One of the uh, advantages of this is that you can look at the transcripts of conversations. So, for example, in the case of uh, the school that, that, that I showed on that demo, we may want to do things like, well, let's not ask for, that, for the contact details off the bat. Let's save that for later in the conversation. So you can actually optimize the instructions you give to uh, the AI when it comes to interacting with uh, the website visitors. And, and so, you know, you can create something that really del delivers what you want very quickly and very effectively. And, and it can handle, it can work in any language and it can handle multiple conversations at one time and it works 24 mm seven. -hmm, exactly. And so to move on, I have two more questions for you, Cal. First of all, obviously before we watch the video, you told me that, um, this is an older version of the software. What changes can schools expect to see? Uh, so one thing we've built is a dashboard. So a, a okay. school can very easily access things like canvas, uh, conversation transcripts and uh, lead contacts. So we've kind of simplified, uh, simplified the access to that. So, you know, just making the user experience uh, optimal. Okay. Okay, very nice, very nice. And I'm sure, obviously, there will be opportunities and perhaps even future lives that we do together where you'll be able to demonstrate the, the newer version of the software, yeah. perhaps the, the dashboards and, and all of this. And my final question is the same final question I had last time. In terms of investment, what are schools who are interested in this looking at obviously um i remember that last time when we were talking about agencies you told me that it depends on the size of the agency because there are licenses involved is it the same for schools or is the setup different and do you take it on a school by school basis and perhaps it's best for the schools to discuss it uh, privately with you 
Yes, there's um, there's an initial setup charge, and that that mm -hmm. covers the cost of harvesting the data from the website. Um, and usually, we'll want to ha have the school provide us with the answers that they want, mm -hmm. the questions they get asked all the time, so that they know that they're getting consistency. That's another point to make: is if you have AI doing this, you can make sure. Mm -hmm. You can really craft the answers to the questions so students are getting told exactly what you want them to be told. And then also the instructions. So there's a setup fee to cover that, and that depends on how much time that takes. And then the monthly cost, because what we'll do is we'll um, always return to the website to harvest the data because there are updates all the time. So it depends on the how many pages there are on the on the school's website and things like that. But it's a single fee. Uh, a single setup, okay. uh, one-off setup charge, and then a monthly fee. And you can cancel any time after two months with one month's notice. Okay. Okay. So, so it's essentially fee. the same concept. Yes. The, the, and the thing with this is you can really see how it's working. You can see how, how many students or visitors per month are actually engaging with the AI, uh, AI. And when they do, what questions are they asking? So this can actually inform the information you have on your website because mm -hmm. you're getting direct feedback from users. And then from that, you can also see how many of these conversations are actually um, producing, you know, good qualified leads. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Not to mention that obviously depending on the kinds of questions the students are asking, the, the school can also start to understand perhaps what keywords are being used and then yeah. include those keywords in their yes. blogs and their website content, enhance their SEO. So it's all related and all very hands-on. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Well, Cal, interesting as always. And obviously, thank you for being with me so early might I say. Normally, for those uh, watching the Schools and Agents Bulletin, as we call it every Friday, that normally takes place at noon. Today, we anticipated it a little bit, and we started bright and early in the morning. So thank you very much for being with me here today, Cal, and I certainly look forward to having you with me once again in the near future. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. We'll speak soon then. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bernice. Bye. Bye-bye. Look.